thank you for being here. And I know this is the last presentation of the day, so we have to make sure we make uh, good use of your time. And we're going to try to do this. The title of the presentation is Investments and the Future of Greece. It could very well be Investments is the only future of Greece. And uh, before I go to the presentation, I will say that just a couple months ago, I was in a SEV meeting, SEV is the Association of Greek Enterprises. They present the survey to us, among which there was a question about which one is one of the priorities in the mind of Greeks regarding the future in the economy. And the answer by an 80%, which is a very high percentage, was growth. I'm not sure that growth in the Greek brain necessarily means investments and privatizations. But it's my personal conviction that uh, this is the only way to make this country going from a bankrupt country, which substantially is, to a thriving economy. And I'm sure we can do this if we just change mentality. Uh, what we have done in the last many years, actually next year, uh, I think is the 10th anniversary of the financial crisis in Greece, is focus all our discussions on a vicious circle of how GDP got reduced by one fourth, of how employment is above 25%, a bit less now, and how, of course, all this has led to lower salaries and consumption. But discussing this again and again and again doesn't help us. We should focus more on solutions. Uh, if we look at the Parliament House, every day we have a blame game about who is responsible for what. If we listen to the media, again, we have repetitive discussions about the misery, about sad stores, and everything that is going wrong in Greece. If we look in our own corporate world, in the private enterprises, again, we devote too much time on saying why we cannot make things happen instead of how we can make things happen. This has to change. Instead of talking again and again about the regulatory environment and the tax regulations and all these difficulties, which is true, we should understand that these are the symptoms of a wrong mentality. We are talking about having a pie, which is getting smaller and smaller, and we're distributing this pie again and again. In, in fact, we're distributing poverty. We have only three ways to make this pie bigger and make everybody happier. Apparently, one is exports of bringing foreign capital to the country, but this takes longer usually to, to shift an economy to an exports-oriented economy. The second one, which is a big advantage of Greece, is tourism. But then again, this is a matter of quality versus quantity. We had a record number of tourists last year, but do they have quality by quality? I mean value added tourists. Uh, if you make more resorts like a Costa Navarino, like Sunny Resort, you have tourists spending two or 3,000 euros a week, as opposed to 1,000 euros a week they spend today, and you understand the multiplier effect in the economy. And last but not least, which is the focus of this presentation, is investments. Investments like uh, Fraport will make the, tur the tourist product much more attractive. Investments like uh, Costco in Piraeus can make Greece be a transportation hub. And uh, also, we have the opportunity of Thessaloniki being another transportation hub. I can mention more examples, but this is probably uh, the focus of other presentations. The, the thing here is, if we become obsessed with breaking investments in Greece, and don't have only exceptions like stereos believing in them, then we can make this country a totally different country. I'll give you some examples instead of talking too much uh, theoretically about some examples that uh, we had in Greece and uh, in uh, our own company Lambda, and then some international <coughs> examples on what investments can do to a country. Uh, first one is this is the building of the International Broadcasting Center when we had Olympic Games in Greece in 2004, and uh, maintenance didn't exist didn't produce any value. This was the first privatization uh, in, in, from the state. It happened in 2013. And we transformed this to the familiar to most of you shopping center of Golden Hall. At the same time, we are ready to invest and make the first Olympic museum uh, in, in this center, and also create the first aquarium in Athens, which are also going to strengthen the touristic proposition we can offer. Now, for three years, we're trying to finish the permitting process and, and do these things. I'm sure it's going to happen. I'm more optimistic than ever that in the next months, we're going to see some moves. And uh, this is one result of investments. Another example, this is how uh, a, an area in the north suburbs of Greece used to be a swamp. Apparently, no value produced, no, job, no jobs created, and apparently, no positive effect on the environment. 
This is what we created there. We created the biggest and the first shopping mall in Greece, a nice residential complex and an office complex. The, the, the thing is not about aesthetics only. It is about creation of jobs and development going along with environment. And this is a, another example how a marina used to be, how it was transformed when it was privatized. All these three examples, which is just one of the many examples we could, we could mention, we have limited time, um, is that one billion was invested, more than 7,000 jobs were created with apparently positive effects, fiscal effects for the economy, and apparently liked by the people because we have more than 25 million visitors every year in these venues. Now, talking about mentality and not only about numbers, the, the, the issue with Greece is to strengthen an asset that has been depleted over the last many years, many, many years, which is credibility. We have to walk the talk, we have to respect the deadlines, and we have to make reforms that are implemented and not just voted. And we have to become more open and more extroverted. We have to support diversity. If we don't open up ourselves to the world, then not only money is not going to come here, but not new mentality is going to come here, and we live more and more in an open world. You cannot stop evolution. It's like going against the wall. You have to open up, otherwise you are, you are out of it. Some international examples that I want to include here and not stay in the micro world of Greece or of Lambda development even more is one of them, I love this example, it's Singapore. Singapore, as you know, is a tiny island, got independent only in 1965, a tiny population full of refugees, full of different ethnicities, no resources, so forth, so on. Now it has become an international trade center, an international touristic center. It's thriving. And they did this by not only opening up to the world and to investments and to, and to expats, but also giving some signs of a changing mentality. They put too much emphasis on education. They made English an official language. These are signs that you want to open up, that you want to change, that you don't uncircle yourself. Another example is Dubai. Many people can say they had oil. No, they had a fraction of the oil that they had in the other United Arab Emirates or in Saudi Arabia or or or. They made it a, an international hub for many things. And again, it was a matter of mentality. They created free trade zones. They made hubs by giving free space to conglomerates to come there. And this way, by bringing a Microsoft, a Google, and Apple, you can bring so many other companies, and you can bring young, young brains to your country to develop new apps, for example. You have to show that you welcome them. Last example, come back from Asia to, to Europe, Estonia. Um, uh, Estonia, another small country. Uh, they had many problems to, to face when they became independent in 91. And uh, they didn't have infrastructure, not only physical infrastructure, but also no communications. And they became the Silicon Valley of Europe. They developed Skype. Skype is not an American product. It's, it's, it's a product developed in Estonia. They became a totally digital country where there is a paperless government. And you see the results. Now their salaries are higher than the salaries in Southern Europe. Their unemployment is under 6%. So you just compare not only what happens if you follow a different route, but how fast it can happen. Because all these examples happen anywhere between 10 and 25 years. Now, I, I, I know this is my fate. I have to talk about Elinicon. I cannot avoid the subject. And actually, I'm in a good mood because I think, I, I, I hope I'm not wrong, um, the, I, I feel a different environment in the last weeks. I think things are moving forward. And after 16 years of having a picture like this for 16 years, and this is a picture that I like to show because it shows that the environment is not supported by living a situation like this. Or you don't find archaeological findings that you want to expose if you don't dig. No matter how much technology has advanced, usually you have to dig to find what is under the ground. You cannot do this by scanning yet the ground. So, uh, Instead of this picture, we want to create this picture. I think this, is, this doesn't do justice to what we're going to create. One of the biggest parks in the world is going to be created there, about the size of Hyde Park. It's going to be the largest seaside park in the world, in a sea in which you can swim. We're going to have 45 kilometers of pedestrian paths and cyclists. Can, I can, can say I, many... Can I interrupt you just a moment? Because this is precisely the picture that we saw perhaps 10 years ago, and you said there, 16 years of zero contribution, right? So we saw the same, the same picture, the same vision. What gives you optimism now that this can actually happen? First of all, I have to do 
justice because I like to be fair. This is not a picture you saw 10 years ago. Maybe this is a picture you saw two years Some, ago. Something similar. No, just, no, just to be, not to be. Not, maybe not from you, but from, we saw visions of the wonders think, yeah. of Elenikon. The difference is that this is a foster master plan for which we paid millions of euros. Okay. <laughs> just a vision. But what uh, yeah, makes me believe that this is going to happen is that uh, we gave to the applicable authorities the, the master plan with the associated studies. And I see that there is an air of change from the applicable authorities to make it move forward. I think that we have all realized in Greece uh, that we have to push things forward. And again, to be fair, it's not only a matter of this administration. It's a matter that Greece had to face over the many, many last years. Even when we want to do things, the public administration caused delays. This has to change because this is the only way that we can create jobs. And uh, by saying this, I have only two more slides, not to take more of your time. This is the master plan. Again, I think not only it's a 7 billion euros project, CAPEX, but the diversity of the developments is amazing. This could be the prime example of, attract of attracting not only foreign capital in terms of investments, but also operators of developments, also banks, and also developers. It has hotels, it has leisure, entertainment, it has university centers, medical centers, you name it. And it's probably one of the few places in which you can live, work, and play. This is a cliche, but it's, it's, it's also reality. And the effect, some of the effects, again, we have shown them in the past. Uh, it's not, you know, when I look at this, of course, the GDP effect is strong and the other multiplier effects. But if you think not only the jobs, which psychologically are going to have a huge effect in, in the Greek economy and in the Greek psychology of today, but look at the, uh, at the far uh, right corner down, one million tourists based on conservative estimates. This can have a tremendous effect, not only because we are talking about increasing the current number of tourists in Athens by 50%, but these tourists are going to go everywhere, and we're talking about tourists that are not going to spend 500 euros average, as the average tourist spends in Greece today or seven, but much, much, much more. And also, they are going to put Greece on the map this time for the right reasons. Uh, before I say the final thank you, I, I want to say that I believe it's a mentality issue in things. It's not only about investment. It's to open ourselves to the world and make everybody feel welcome here to work, to play, to have fun, and to invest, and also enhance our mentality. Thank you very much. Thank you.